Hey people, it's Ed, tight right hamstring bud here. Time to test out the Air Zoom Vomero 16 from Nike over a long run. It works out well as a daily shoe, but is there enough cushion there for the extended miles? Let's make it so. Welcome to the channel one and all. If you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button and also click the bell below for notifications of when we roll out those new videos for you. Then you'll be aware when fresh videos are ready for consumption. A thumbs up is better than Joey's neighbor singing Mornings Here. The Vomero 16, a rather space age looking shoe. It looks a little bit like something out of Thunderbirds. It's been exciting to run my daily miles in this one, but how about its longer run potential? After a 5k time trial on the Saturday, followed by a quite gruelling gig, the first in about 16 months, I knew I had to scale things back a bit. And if I was going to do a long run, it had to be only a steady effort. None of those half marathon pace miles or anything. I just wasn't up to it. All the old Edbud giraffe legs had in them was a steady paced effort. And even that took a lot of willpower to get out there. Perfect for a long run test in the Vomero 16. So 11 miles or 17.67 kilometers, just over eight minutes per mile which is about five minutes per kilometer. Slightly different route to normal today, 476 feet or 145 meters of elevation and a total time of one hour, 28 minutes. Conditions were dry early on, but turned to a Cornwall coastal deluge and the last couple of miles. And in fairness, I actually really enjoyed that. I was running down through one section with my arms just up in the air, pushing the water onto my face. It was quite wonderful. Really needed that, refreshed me. One lady thought it was particularly humorous. I don't know what I looked like by then, but probably quite tired and tuckered out. Average heart rate of 130 beats per minute. And I tried to keep the cadence around about 168 to 170 steps per minute. You can pretty much see the heart rate mimics the elevation spikes there in the route. There's almost perfect correlation there with the higher heart rates on those bigger and longer climbs. I've been very deliberately increasing the elevation across each of the weeks over the last three or four, pretty much all through July actually. It's been quite deliberate and I'm quite enjoying those sustained climbs now. There's one or two hills I particularly enjoy testing myself on. I'm not sure that Sunday was probably the best day to do that, but I really enjoyed it. Making a weakness perhaps of mine over time into a strength and always a session to savour. So a good hour operating in my endurance zone, which makes for about 95% of the time in my moderate heart rate zone. So how do these perform? All in all, very, very well. So the upper performed very well on a more airy day, certainly one of the cooler days we've had over recent weeks. The toe box I find to be a little more breathable than the Pegasus 38. It's certainly thinner, though a touch thicker than that found on the Invincible run or the Infinity run. I guess it's similar, I suppose, in some ways to the Nova Blast 2. Lockdown was really good and consistent over the miles without any need to stop and retighten the laces. Nike really seem to love these lace loops recently. They're appearing on lots of different shoes. Terra Kiger 7, the Streak 7, and also on the Dragonfly track spike they've released. They tend to work very well for me, though I did enjoy the additional padding here. Very much the shoe feels like a slightly more nimble version of the Saucony Triumph series. It's plush in the upper, but not overly. A lot of these long run shoes you see can feature loads and loads of cushion all around your foot, but I think it's just in certain places that you want it. Otherwise, it can just feel like it's weighing you down over those longer miles. I think the padding here just negates the strain of the laces over the top of the foot, and it does look a lot more padded than it really is. I got away, in fact, with one of the thinner Nike Spark socks on Sunday's run, so that goes to show you don't need a really thick sock on the long run, which is nice. I'm enjoying the additional perceived width in the toe box on the Vomero 16. It's certainly true to size, but I'd suggest there's a little bit more room there once the foot begins to swell. I know there's a few of you out there that do get quite upset when shoes get really dirty. I mean, they're a tool and that's going to happen. But the only real area of concern here, even though it's a white shoe, is this more padded area in the heel. Everything else seems to clean up really well. As I mentioned before, I'm not too worried about it. It's a bit like it's going to happen, so just let it happen. Pretty sure there's a Tame Impala song where he says that. Midsole now. So I found that the combo of cushion here and those AirPods in the forefoot of the shoe are just as serviceable on a long, steady pace run as they have been on my half marathon paced efforts earlier in the week. I ran a load of faster miles in this one much earlier last week. Just seems like the Vomero works pretty well 
across any pace. I wouldn't suggest it's a brilliant 5K shoe or anything like that, but I think for most training paces, for me at least, it's a winner. I found it far less dense and more exciting to run in than some of Nike's React-based shoes. I think if you don't want 100 different shoes, the Vomero ticks a lot of boxes. Quite a number of the shoes I've tried out with less cushioned midsoles over the long run, perhaps the more rebound-based midsole foams, may not suit everybody out there. I think on the long run, some people do just want something that's quite dense, but airy, that's going to soak up the miles and provide some impact protection. I'm always on the lookout for something that's balanced, really, between that and something a little more nimble. And as such, I think that the overlooked Vomero 16 here might actually appeal to a lot of people once they actually get it on foot and try it out. Sometimes you might get a review that just puts people off a shoe completely, but I do urge you to try this one. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Just say I haven't been sent this shoe or anything. I bought it with my own cash. I've got no axes to grind. And as you see, I don't just buy them and run a couple of miles in them and send them back. I put them through their paces, even if they're a load of trash. I'm certainly feeling an improved level of stability here from the mixture of foams and tech in the midsole. This makes for a really forgiving shoe on foot. Quite a lot more forgiving, I would suggest, than the Invincible run. Certainly one of the more impressive shoes over the long run distance for me that I've tried out over the last year. Certainly in terms of a non-race or non-super shoe. Just a daily offering that just works really well. Outsole wise, there's only one section here in the heel that seems to vacuum up debris on the run. I wouldn't say it's as bad as perhaps the Adios 6, that's one of its downsides really, but certainly the fins in the rear section of the shoe do seem to allow stones and small bits of gravel to get in there. Oddly, the worst part's around the Nike swoosh at the back here, so just be aware of that. The rest of the outsole doesn't seem to have that same problem. When the conditions turn wet, the outsole continued to perform well with the slightly flatter and less height-hungry lugs on the underbelly of the shoe. The rubber here does seem to be a little bit more malleable than that found on the Pegasus 38. It's closer, I suppose, to what you would find on the underside of the Invincible run. Though I did find that there were certain sections of the Invincible run that did start to wear away even after 100 miles. But I can't really fault it in terms of traction. Even in the wet, it felt really good, really assured. Perhaps similar in terms of how assured it feels if you were going to your favourite kebab shop after a night of fun and frolics. Certainly one of the most successful long run tests of any shoe over the last year. It's right up there in terms of steady paces along with the Pegasus 38. More range and comfort than the Energy 3 from Reebok. Though I think the Endorphin Pro still has the edge over the Vomero 16. But then again that's a lighter, much more nimble and expensive shoe. Still has the edge in terms of nimbleness. Is that a word? Less dense and I found it had more return than the Invincible run. Perhaps more usable on a daily basis as well in comparison to something like the Rebel 2. As such, I think there's few other shoes out there that bring so much versatility to the table. I've gone up towards anaerobic pace in this shoe, very slow recovery type runs, steady runs. It just seems to handle all of them very well. So certainly a very positive longer run in the Vomero 16. I don't think it'll be long till I get up to 100 miles in this one. Said it before and I'll say it again, don't judge a book by the cover. You tried this one out guys? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. Musical interlude time. It's a band I really, really enjoy listening to. Certainly on a long run as well, or if I want to chill out. If I need to remove all the stress from the shoe world. Actually the shoes don't really ever give me any stress, it's all the other stuff. You know how it is. Go and check out the band Krungbin. Now I'll put it up on the screen and also put a link in the description. These guys are masters of being able to chill out the Ed Bud. Their last album I think came out in 2020. Their last album came out in 2020 and it has some fantastic songs on there. They could have been made 30, 40 years ago. They sound so good. Guitar playing is out of this world on this album and it's just so mellow. It's one that you should pick up and try out on your long run. For the most recent album, the track First Class has some beautiful, slightly phased wah effects on the guitar. And Father Bird, Mother Bird is another wonderful track. Beautiful, precise strap playing here with the most wonderful, succulent reverb tales. Dearest Alfred is another one of my favourites from this album. I do suggest you go and check them out, guys. Wonderful drumming too. Bass playing just so on point. Minimal chunks of sound here, but they all just work so well together to create this wonderful atmosphere. Krungbin.
one of the best bands that you've never heard of. Right, I'm gonna get editing so you can see this. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video, guys. Always appreciated. If you haven't done so already, help the channel out by hitting that subscribe button and also dinging the bell so you're informed when we roll out the new morsels. And you can help the channel out a huge amount too by giving this video a thumbs up like and sharing it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.